So thank yes. you so much for um, taking the time to dial in and um, being with us. And um, just for everybody's uh, uh, interest, we're actually recording that talk as of now when Sebastian is speaking. So if you would not like to be recorded, just leave your camera off and put your questions or comments in um, the text box. But of course, it's always nice to have a, a bit of a discussion. Um, and I was just briefly talking with um, Sebastian before that um about the the topic of his talk which is arms exports law or legal aspects of arm trade as you can see and um of course there's um a lot happening in, in europe at the moment but his topic is more broadly and uh, i'm very pleased that um one of our dear members who can't be with us today, uh, one of his colleagues um, arranged for Sebastian to talk to us. He's an expert in the field of German constitutional law, worked in the university space uh, uh, for a long time. That's how we got talking about the universities here in Adelaide. Mm -hmm. And um, he will be talking to us about the legal aspects of arms trade. He works as a lawyer now in the Cologne law firm of LLR one of his main areas of expertise constitutional law and he deals in particular with issues of foreign trade law in this area he regularly gives lectures and seminars for various institutions and is active as an author he is also a member of the specialist group on arms exports of the joint conference church and development so thank you very much for being here and the floor is yours thank you for the kind introduction Ladies and gentlemen, I'm quite happy to have the opportunity of talking with you about uh, German arms trade regulation. Um, as uh, Juliana has told, um, I'm at the moment in Kazakhstan. I don't know whether there are any participants from Germany at the moment, but this is a rather international meeting. Okay. Oh, uh, doesn't go on at the moment. Yes. Well, all regulations of arms trade will have to tackle a number of common problems. First of all, what kind of arms trade is allowed? That is uh, the primary concern of any regulation about arms trade. Um, what kind of exports are allowed? What transits, what brokering, what financing will be a licensable? One may differentiate between different kinds of arms, components of arms, or military relevant technologies, and choose to generally prohibit the trade with some of them. The reason to do so, um, the reasons to do so are mostly strategic. One does not want to proliferate, especially um, powerful weapons or technologies to produce them. Uh, one example for these kind of, of regulations um, is the non-proliferation treaty on nuclear arms that um, generally prohibits any transfer of technology or nuclear weapons. But much more common than uh, export bans of that kind are more flexible restrictions on the export of certain arms, machinery or technologies. Exportation in these cases uh, will not be completely forbidden but it will be restricted by conditions on the export license. Well, another set of restrictions concerns not the kind of goods to be exported, but the permissible destinations of exports. It's quite normal that states differentiate between close friends and bitter foes and the various shades uh, between these uh, two extremes. And quite often, therefore, arms exports are admissible when the destination is a friendly country and prohibited if the recipient is not uh, that friendly. A famous and rather historically rather important uh, example is the so-called COCOM list drawn up by NATO countries, Japan and Australia, uh, that contained arms and goods, other goods which were held to be strategically important. And exportation of these goods listed on that COCOM list to Eastern Bloc countries was strictly forbidden. Similar regulation still exists. So in general, we can say the kind of goods to be exported and the destination uh, are uh, 
the the main criteria of uh, licensable of the question whether uh, an export is licensable or not. Well then, who um, decides? The important issue of any arms trade regulation is who will decide? Who will be the authorizing body? Obviously, this is a matter of political importance because um, decision that will be taken will presumably differ according to the institutions that take them. For example, the Ministry of Defense will have quite a different uh, way of judging the pros and cons of some export um, from the Department for International Development or the Ministry of Economy. Then, who controls? If there is an authority granting approvals according to arms trade regulation, we may also think about how we want to control this authorizing body. And this question may be split up into two, albeit intertwined questions. First of all, who is controlling? Well, there might be, and usually is, some sort of internal control. That is, the authorizing body um, will um, be controlled by some other bodies within the executive branch, usually within the same ministry. Or we have some sort of external control that may be exercised by political institutions such as the parliament, or it may be um, exercised by the judiciary, by court. The question of who controls obviously bears on upon the means of control that are available. Parliament may discuss uh, controversial arms export decisions, may even enact a new legislation, but its judgment or its opinion um, will always be that of a political institution. It will always act like that. Whereas a court will give a judgment uh, on some export matters according to the applicable regulations, but it will usually refrain from any comment um, on the political usefulness of um, these exports. So there are quite different kinds of controlling arms exports decisions. Well, there are three layers of arms uh, trade regulation, and I will talk only about national law, um, German law, but we should not forget and always keep in mind um, that there is supranational law that in Germany is mainly European Union law um, that bears upon arms export matters. And of course, there are international regulations. So in the whole, the, the realm of arms exports is, is uh, well, complex, if not to say labyrinthian sometimes in its construction. Okay, talking about German law, we have to start with the constitution, the Grundgesetz, basic law. And um, then I will give a short introduction into other um, norms that are important here. The German uh, constitution, no, the German arms trade regulation is nominally geared uh, to the strict control of the export of arms, especially of military arms and um, armaments. And this control shall be exercised according to the principles of respect for rights in the country of destination and of preservation of regional peace and stability. This is clearly expressed by Article 26, Paragraph 1. Um, Germany um, oh, confesses its orientation towards a peaceful world and uh, any kind of war of aggression shall be criminalized. And there is a general constitutional ban upon uh, manufacturing or um, exporting um, uh, weapons designed for war for military weapons. This ban may be, though, lifted um, by the government if certain conditions are given. So, on paper, uh, this seems to be a very restrictive set of regulation or say very restri restrictive uh, basis for any other um, regulations. Practice differs though. Um, 
economical and strategically motivated uh, arms control seem to gain ground. Um, we can talk about examples perhaps later. So there's a difference between the, the intention, um, the constitutional intention of, of uh, minimizing arms trade and production and German practice. In fact, Germany is one of the most important exporters of arms. Well, what kind of arms trade is licensable in Germany? Talking about military weapons, um, this is regarded, as we've seen, as a matter of great importance by the Constitution. Um, the details are regulated by the so-called Military Weapons Control Act. The ban of mil on military weapons exports thereby, thereby um, may only be lifted if first the export is not contrary to international law, that is contrary, for example, to internationally binding embargoes. And um, there is no danger that the weapons will be used in a violation of peace. Other arms and armaments than military weapons um, are exported uh, according to the regulations in the so-called Foreign Trade Act. Exports can be denied if they are contrary to the security interest of Germany or if they endanger an international coexistence. If none of these conditions um, is uh, given, exports of armaments other than military um, weapons have to be approved by the authorities. So there is a basic, there's a differentiation between military weapons and other arms and armaments that is uh, very important. Well, who is competent? Article 26 um, of German constitution says the cabinet as a body is competent uh, for granting approvals for the exportation of military weapons. But the Military Weapons Control Act in rather, well, I should say in a rather clear contradiction to the constitution, allows cabinet to delegate the decision of granting approvals on military arms exports to a single ministry. And cabinet made extensive use of that and delegated the bulk of exporting licenses, license, licensing, no. <laughs> mainly to the Ministry of Economy, partly to the Ministry of Defense and to the Foreign Office. Competent for the decision on armaments exports other than military air weapons is the federal, so called Federal Office of Economy. Eco Economy and Export Control, which is an authority belonging to the Ministry of Economy. So if we look at the competence um, side, we perhaps detect a certain emphasis on the economic side of arms trade, much less to the peace uh, or human rights uh, side of the matter. Control. Well, who is controlling um, the authorities granting approvals? In fact, we don't know very much about German arms trade control, mostly because the main part of control is exercised within the cabinet or the ministries involved. Judiciary control is minimal because you can file a suit um, only if you are denied a license of exportation. So effectively, no legal action can be taken against a license that has been granted. And those um, arms producers that are denied um, an, export, an, an approval of exportation usually don't file a suit either because um, they don't, they are reliant or they are dependent on a good um, relationship with their export with those authorizing bodies. So, in fact, we have we can't find um, more than a, than a few, perhaps a dozen uh, court, um, court judgments on uh, armament exports matters. Well, parliamentary control is also fragmentary, but for a different reason. The Bundestag, the German parliament, 
does not know much about ongoing arms exports. There is simply a lack of information, a lack of transparency in arms trade. And if Parliament doesn't know about something, it can't discuss it. So, um, obviously, transparency seems to be a very um, a key matter in uh, the, uh, the realm of arms exports. Official information about arms and armaments exports is given by the German government twice a year in its so-called report on armaments exports. But this report is an example of too few, and it used to be also an example of too late. But that has uh, fortunately changed. Um, why is too few? Well, the data given lacks important details. For example, the export of so-called dual-use goods or the transfer of blueprints and production licenses for German-designed weapons to foreign countries is not reported. Perhaps most significant, the report remains silent on the political rationale for even the most important arms exports. As I told you, the report, or as I hinted at, the report used to be chronically late. For example, um, the report for uh, 2011 was released in November 2012, but that situation has changed uh, with the last government. They have decided to, to increase the rhythm and um, the frequency, and they now uh, do a report twice a year, and it usually comes in time. Nevertheless, uh, the report leaves much to be desired um, looking at the, the information given. So, as a conclusion, we can say that the field of arms trade policy in Germany is clearly dominated by the executive branch, and judiciary control is nearly non existent. Public and parliamentary control remains fragmentary. The general lack of transparency goes a long way to, to explain that weakness of democratic control of arms trade policy. And there remain important constitutional questions to be answered. First of all, that of competence for the export of um, military weapons. But then the German constitution has a very strong bias against the export of arms whereas political praxis has changed very much from that. Okay, thank you for your attention and I am looking forward to our discussion. Thank you very much.